Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is another video covering the FDKIN peripheral of the SDM32, and today we will use the normal mode. I have already made a video on the loopback mode, you can see it in the top right corner. You must watch that video first, as I am not going to cover everything in this video, even the code is going to be the same as the previous one. This video will only cover the normal mode, and the RAM management in the FD CAN, as we talked about in the previous video. I don't have two separate FD CAN devices, but my controller has two FD CAN peripherals with two separate transceivers, so I am going to transfer data between them. Both the peripherals are using the similar transceiver, so we can use the similar configuration in both. The connection is pretty simple, connecting the CAN high with CAN high, and CAN low with CAN low. You can see it in this picture the CAN high and low pins for the FD CAN 1, and FD CAN 2. Here I have connected them to each other. Let's start the cube IDE and create a new project. I am using the STM32H745 controller. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let me clear the pinout first. Just like the previous video, we will use the internal clock in this one too. Here you can see the internal clock of 64 MHz. Go to the connectivity section, and enable the FD CAN 1. Let's fix the clock configuration first. Here you can see the FD CAN clock is 50 MHz, this is the same as we had in the previous video. Let's configure the FD CAN 1. Most of it will be similar to the previous video, so not much of the explanation is needed for that part. We will not be using the bitrate switching. The mode will be the normal mode. Auto transmission is enabled, and the rest are disabled. Now regarding these values, as I have already mentioned that we are using the same configuration as the previous video, we can use the same values. So I am just going to input the same values that I used in the previous project. I already mentioned in the beginning that I am not going to explain the entire thing again, so you should watch the previous video for it. The link can be found in the description below. Yes we will talk about the message RAM here, since I am using both the FD CAN peripherals, the RAM needs to be divided between them. But since there is a lot to cover in that perspective, we will do it after configuring the rest of the parameters. For now we will keep it zero. We will use one standard filter to filter out the standard IDs. One RX 500 element to store the 12 bytes of data, which gets passed through the filter. Notice this carefully that I am using the 500 for FD CAN 1. We will skip the rest and use one TX 50 q element, which will be used to transmit 12 bytes of data to the CAN bus. The rest of the configuration will be again similar to that of the previous video. Here you can see the bit rate of 500,000 bits per second. We also need to make sure the pins have been configured properly. Here the pin PB9 is configured as the TX pin, but in the schematics, it is pin PH13. So I am changing it to PH13. At last, enable the interrupt zero. That's it for the FD CAN 1, now we will configure FD CAN 2. The pins configured for the FD CAN 2 are also wrong, so let's correct them. The rest of the configuration will be the same as that of the FD CAN 1, since it also uses the same clock, we don't need to modify anything much here. We will talk about that message RAM in a while. 
Note here that I am not using the RX 500 this time. We have already used the RX 500 for the FD can 1, and it's not like if we use it here, it will not work. It will obviously work, but in the callback function, we will have to use more conditions to check if the received data is coming from FD can 1, or can 2. Since we do have the option to use another FIFO, we can use the FIFO 1 for this case. And the rest of the configuration is now similar to FDCAN 1. Enable the FDCAN 2 interrupt 0. Alright the configuration is almost complete, so now we will talk about the RAM management. We will use the same reference document, AN5348, that we used last time. So as I mentioned, the FDCAN peripherals share a common RAM, which is 2560 words in total, which translates to 10 kilobytes. This RAM accounts for the filters you are using, the TX and RX FIFO, and some other things. Unlike regular CAN, we can use multiple filters, and multiple FIFO in the FD CAN. As you can see here, we can use up to 128 elements of the standard filters. This in total would occupy 128 words from the RAM. So this means one standard filter occupies one word. Similarly, we can use up to 64 elements of the extended filters, which in total occupy 128 words. So each extended filter occupies two words from the RAM. The FIFO and buffer have a little more deeper calculation. We can use up to 64 elements, and the total RAM occupation can be 1152 words. But it depends on other factors as well, for example how big is the data size. As shown in this table, if the data size is up to 8 bytes, each element would occupy 4 words. And similarly if the data size is 64 bytes, each element will occupy 18 words. So the maximum you can use is 64 bytes data, so maximum space by each element would be 18 words, and maximum number of elements we can use is 64, this makes the maximum occupancy of 1152 words. But remember here that we are using 12 bytes of data, so each element is going to occupy 5 words. Whatever space our configuration is occupying, we just have to keep adding it. The TX event FIFO occupies two words per element. The TX FIFO or TX buffer uses the same logic as the RX buffers, but here we can use the maximum of 32 elements. And at last we have the trigger memory, which occupies two words per element. Just to make it clear, the elements are basically how many numbers of things you can use. For example, 128 elements in the standard filter means we can use 128 different standard filters. The configuration of each filter gets saved in each element. Or 64 RX buffers means that we can use 64 different buffers, with each buffer capable of storing 64 bytes of data. Which data or filter configuration will be stored in which element, is something we configure later in the code. Let's see this RAM occupation as according to our configuration. The FDCAN 1 offset is set to 0, so the RAM occupation will begin at the start of the message RAM. Here we have one standard filter, so one word. Then we have one RX FIFO element with 12 bytes of data, so 5 words. Next is one TX FIFO element with 12 bytes of data, so another 5 words. That's it, the total RAM used by the FDCAN 1 is 11 words. So for FDCAN 2, we can set the offset at 11 words. FDCAN 2 will also occupy another 11 words, but that's not our worry, as the rest of the RAM is allocated to it. Since there are only two FD can peripherals, I could simply divide half the RAM to each peripheral, setting an offset of 1280 for FD can 2. But I wanted to explain this division, 
and this is why we will go with the offset of 11. That is it for the configuration, click save to generate the project. Let's build the code once. As I mentioned, we will use the same code that we created in the previous video about the loopback mode, here is the main file from that project. We will start with the filter configuration of the CAN peripherals. So let's copy this. And we will paste it in the fdcan1init function. The ID of the fdcan1 will be 11 hexa, and that of the fdcan2 will be 22 hexa. So the fdcan1 should filter the messages coming from the 22 hexa, the ID of the fdcan2. Also note that it will filter the messages to RX FIFO 0. Let's configure the filters for the fdcan2 also. The fdcan2 peripheral should filter the messages coming from the 11 hexa, the ID of the fdcan1. Also the fdcan2 should filter the messages to RX501. Change this to fdcan2. Alright, that completes the filter configuration. Let's copy this part now. Here we have some definitions for headers and buffers. We will define them separately for both the cans. So I am using the one to indicate the defines for the fdcan1, and two for the fdcan2. Next comes the callback. This callback is basically called whenever there is new data received in the RX FIFO. We will write another callback for the FDCAN2. The changes will be that instead of FIFO0, it will be FIFO1. Basically it's a callback for the new data in RX FIFO1. The same change needs to be made here, and here, and here. If the callback is triggered due to the new message in RX FIFO1, we will first copy the data from the RX501. Get RX message is the function for the same. It will copy the data from RX501 and save the header information in RX header 2 and data in RX data 2. After copying the data, we will activate the notification again so that the interrupt can trigger again when the new data arrives. I forgot to change them in fdcan1 callback function. Alright let's go inside the main function now. Here we have the function to start the fdcan1. We will write a similar one for the fdcan2. Then this function activates the notification for the new data in the RX 500. This is basically enabling the interrupt for the new data, which triggers our callback. We will do the similar activation for FDCAN2, for the new data arriving in the RX 501. Next is the TX header configuration for FDCAN1. Let me put one for the FDCAN1. So the ID of the FDCAN1 is 11 hexa. We are using standard ID only. We will be transmitting data frame. The data length is going to be 12 bytes. The error state indicator is enabled, the bit rate switching is off. We are using the FD CAN, not the regular CAN. And the TX FIFO event, and message markers are disabled. We will use the similar configuration for the TX header of the FD CAN 2. Just the ID will be 22 hexa. The rest of the configuration will be the same. Now finally the time to transmit the data. Add message to TX FIFO queue can be used to add the message to the TX FIFO, which will be then sent to the CAN bus. The message is the TX data buffer, which will be this string, indicating that it is transmitted by the fdcan1, along with an incremented value of the index variable. So inside the while loop, 
the FD can one will keep transmitting this message every one second. Once the message is transmitted on the CAN bus, all the other devices will receive this message, though in this case, there is only one more device. The ID of the transmitter is 11 hexa, and since we have programmed the filter of the FD can 2 device to accept the messages from this ID, the message will filter through to the RX501. On receiving a new message in the RX501, the callback will be triggered. Here we will copy the information from RX501, and store them in RX header 2 and RX data 2. After enabling the notification again, we will transmit similar data to the CAN bus. Accept this change to identify that it is transmitted by the FD CAN 2. Once the data is transmitted on the CAN bus, the FD CAN 1 will receive this data, and here we will just store the information in the RX data 1 and RX header 1. Again after 1 second, the FD CAN 1 will retransmit modified data, and FD CAN 2 will transmit another response. This cycle will keep going forever. Let's build this code now. We have some warnings about the sprintf function. Let me typecast this to a character pointer. Also include the header file for the sprintf function. Alright everything is clear now, let's debug the code. I have added the tx headers and datas in the live expression. Since the transmission is done by the fdcan1, let's put a breakpoint inside the callback of the fdcan2. Let's run the code now. We have hit the breakpoint. You can see the data is stored in the tx data1 buffer. Let's step over these functions. Once the getRx message function is called, the same data is now stored in the rx data2 buffer. Now here we are going to transmit some data on the CAN bus, and once the data is received by the fdcan1, this callback will trigger. If you notice the tx data2, here you can see the new data, with the new value of the index variable. Here we have hit the breakpoint. Let's see if we get the same data in the Rx data buffer. So we have received the data, which was transmitted by the TX data too. Let's remove the breakpoints and let these run freely. We will only check the receive buffers. Keep an eye on the values of the index variable. As you can see the data transmission is continuous, and it is different in each case. So we saw how to use the normal mode in FDCAN. Though I have used the same controller, you can use different devices too. The connection will be the same, connecting can high together and can low together. This is it for the video. I hope you understood the concept. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching and have a nice day ahead.